Heinz Electrodynamic Design in Germany came out with the original headphone, the Headphone. H-E-D-D-P-H-O-N-E. -E. This uses a very different type of driver, AMT. This driver is not unknown. Predominantly, it resides in the professional space of the two-channel world used for tweeters. Klaus Heinz and his son, Dr. Richard, are the geniuses behind this technology. And their company, based in Berlin, put out the first headphone into the community and it was received with mixed results. Hi, I'm Koji CEO. Welcome to Convince Me Audio. This is the open back headphone head to let's take a look together. Special thank you goes out to Head for sending this unit in for review and assessment all the way from Germany. I mean, if you're looking at spending well over $2,000, you want some kind of gratification when you unbox it before anything else. This big beast mode, there's a reason why it's on the desk like this, is to show you that start to finish, they have really upped their game. So I'm going to put this aside and talk to you for a little bit. The original headphone was released in, I believe, around 2018. And I experienced this headphone about 2021 uh, in a hi-fi store, sadly, that closed down in London, in central London. Um, but the gentleman behind that is now working at Elise Audio. He was here himself in March for the CMA Hi-Fi show. This headphone had a beautiful tuning, especially with the HM1 from Sale. But Sadly, it was so heavy and cumbersome and ergonomically just unworkable. It passed by and I never reviewed that unit due to the ergonomics for me personally, but tonally it did some very interesting things. And the technology of uh, AMT has never been used in a headphone before until they developed the VVT. This Electrodynamic driver headphone does not need a separate box. This works just like a normal dynamic and a planar. You can plug it into anything. It is uh, somewhat hard to drive. You're looking at around 89 dB sensitivity, but it's functional. And now I understand why the ergonomics of the first headphone, because they weren't developing something normal, something what's already out on the market. We have some very thin planars, we have some very light dynamic headphones. We're doing something very different over here. So that was the reason. And they took feedback from the community and I think they came up with the best solution they possibly can. As we will see, I think there is room for improvement, but I think from the original, we are talking tremendous leaps and bounds. We get these big drawers, two of them in fact, like so. Opening the lighter of the two boxes, we get a lot of adapters. This is a 3.5 to a 6.3. We get a okay 6.3 to 3.5 pin cable. We'll have a look at that momentarily. We get some binding stuff and we get a pair of extra pads. Love it. Why not? That's one of the drawers with some nice accessories to boot. Love it. Okay, before we get onto the headphones, the cable is rubbery. I mean, it doesn't keep its shape too much, but um, I have seen much nicer cables, to be honest with you. It's okay, it, it, it's okay. Uh, like Meze and Tungsten and Audizy, I think all have better cables, in my opinion. This just feels a bit thin and the connections are nice. Oh, look at these things. They're beautiful. Yeah, I, I like the connectors. I am not a big fan of the cable. It's braided, quite decent. Sounds okay, but we'll get onto that later. We get an extra pair of pads. Thank you for these. Uh, most manufacturers don't do stuff like this. This is very much appreciated. And uh, these are perforated on the inside, as you can see. Leather, very, very cushy wedge design. And these are obviously magnetic. That gets hold on to the driver, like the Meze and stuff. Thank you so much. Again, that is 
good news. We get treated to some very nice things. This is actually a very nice bag. Probably one of my favorites in this design, to be honest with you. Nice pair of zips. Well done, head. You really have upped your game, haven't you? Whoa. Okay. These are the new headphones. Full specification and weight scrolling down the screen here. In comparison with the original scrolling down the screen here. These headphones articulate very nicely at 180 degrees. Wonderful. Uh, we get a... Oh, we got one more cable as well. This one's the Balance 4.4, identical. And we get an additional adapter. This one is 4-pin XLR for the Balance. So you get your cables, your adapters, everything covered. That is very decent indeed. Extremely nice carrying case. Like, this thing's awesome. Yeah, I think I prefer it more than the Focals and the Binomials by quite a large margin. It's quite big though. We're here. These are the AMT drivers, this is the headphone, this is magnesium alloy and carbon fiber. They've really gone a full out on this thing, I think. Um, as you can see, these tiny, tiny holes on the grill, if you touch it lightly, you get a sort of uh, top of a yogurt lid sort of sound. Uh, the same sort of crinkly sound you get with the Warwick Acoustics Aperio and Brevera. A lot lighter than the original. Uh, with some very interesting functionality which we'll get onto momentarily. 3.5 angled connectors, very, very clicky. Uh, I was very impressed by the sockets on this headphone. Let me show you. Click. German engineering. Outstanding. Starting from the bottom of the unit, like so, gently placing that on the table, you can pry the pads off like so, and it comes away very, very easily, like that. That's the driver inside there, which is extremely interesting in its design and functionality. So the AMT drivers with the amplification inside the baffle, I presume, is designed like an accordion, so that air gets trapped between the folds and dispersed at different rates and from the original to this one they've had to rework the driver through and through the folds are not symmetrical you've got smaller folds and bigger folds obviously the smaller folds hold less air i presume if i'm looking at it logically and disperse that air at four times the rate i believe um, these are full frequency response full range drivers for the headphone. And I don't believe anyone else in the industry has developed anything like this yet. So this is a very interesting design. I love companies that actually go beyond the call of duty and go into a different realm, like Raal with their ribbon tweeters. As we've discussed many, many times, the head original headphone was very uncomfortable. Um, they have made this probably, it's probably lost half its weight. It, it feels a lot lighter. The headband, you've got this extremely thick plush foam up top to sit right here, but this took a while to break in. It was quite stiff at the beginning and it built up hot spots for me personally. That is subjective, your mileage may vary. We have a lot of straps and funny things going on, so let us undress the headphone and take off its belts. As you can see, there's a strap underneath here with holes. This one is to drop the cup below or above the ear to get the perfect height. The strap above will stretch out the headphones widthwise, like so. So once you've done that, you just hook it over the little holes and once you do it, it's extremely stable, like so. It's very, very easy. So you've got two sets of adjustments. On top of that, the headphones rotate 180 degrees so you can lay it flat in its case or on the desk while you're burning it in. These took a while to burn in for me, but the change was barely minimal. So I'm thinking the break-in came from the pads rather than the driver, unlike a planar or dynamic headphone, personally. A redesigned, reworked driver from the ground up, a brand new chassis from the ground up, half the weight, feels like to me, far more comfortable, but still a big design because this is holding a lot. I would say the original headphone on the right setup sounded sweet, sugar sweet, like honey. 
Pianos were beautiful on it. Vocals were very present. This was three years ago, so take it with a pinch of salt. But I do remember wishing the headphones were lighter so I could use it more and spend more time with it because it really sounded musical to me. This is not that sound tuning. This is a completely different tuning to my ears. This has predominantly been designed to be studio reference like the Sale HM1 and like some of the Bayer Dynamics. It's a neutral headphone with emphasis in the upper mid-range and the lower treble. This area, as a rule, in the studio environment, highlights mastering and inconsistencies with the mixing of a track. And it's definitely apparent here. So you will know when you put a badly mastered, badly mixed track on this unit and that can be a problem for the type of genres you listen to. It will definitely show you what the track is doing, what's wrong with it, why you should have better taste in music. Only kidding, there is no such thing as bad music in my opinion. The drivers themselves are extremely resolving. In fact, they might be some of the best detail retrieval in macro dynamics in this category period of 2000 and above. They are extremely quick, extremely punchy, very source dependent, and very genre dependent, and very mix dependent. I think a studio engineer can easily use this headphone if they can bear the weight, which is still heavier than the uh, average sort of distribution of headphones. It's comfortable, but I would say for me, I've had some issues. 45 minutes is my listening time with these headphones. And then I do actually get pressure here and weight pulling down here. Meze Audio, they are not. But their technicality can't be denied. So with that, let's break down the sound. First of all, using an electronic EDM track from Infected Mushroom, I will link all the tracks down below to get an idea of what the drivers were capable of. Sub bass does dig very low, but it feels as though on a variety of systems that my impact against my eardrum is not as visceral as say for example a Focal Utopia, where the dispersion of the air does not seem to attack the eardrum too much. So it does feel a little weightless, but having weight. It's a bit of a bizarre contradictory in terms. It is weighty without moving too much air against the eardrum for me personally, sub bass wise. Mid bass is ultra quick, ultra dynamic, very punchy on the right equipment. Upper bass region can come across a little thin. I don't think it supports the treble region too, too much. Uh, for example, Chinese classical drums, the weight, the visceral impact, the resonance, sometimes can feel a little lacking for me personally, but it's not enough to break the sound, I would say. Mid range is neutral. It's resolving. It's very present and it's very colorless in its performance. You get articulation and separation of instruments in this area very nicely. If there is a bad mix from the track itself where 3K region is a little bit forward or there's a big dip in the lower 1K region or forward in the 6K region climbing up to that lower treble region, mid treble region-ish, you will know about it and it will change the frequency response of the track quite drastically. So sometimes you'll think, okay, I like this track. Why does it sound this bad here? And, or why does it sound like a bit like this? And that's down to the way it was mixed at the studio. This will highlight that. Do you want every track to sound different? Do you want to hear every characteristics of the track from the environment and everything else that's happening around the instruments, not just the instruments itself. This will show you that. Climbing up to the treble region with its bass line in the upper mid range region, I would say if your tracks are badly mastered, you're going to get shouty, you're going to get discordant, and it might even be painful like metal or black metal if it's not mastered well, for example. Classical music in this area, if it's recorded well, is absolutely freaking glorious almost electrostatic feeling. It's resolving, macro dynamics is fantastic, and you can peer into a clean, clear glass window of the song. It's very, very resolving. Treble region, 
is somewhat forward, very airy, very detailed and non-forgiving. This is a reference monitor. If that is something you love, for me, it's definitely a characteristic I like to have around the studio. So I would like a headphone like this lying around all the time to just double check and triple check things. Yes, it's fantastic. But for true musical euphonic listening, you might need to do some tweaking. So let's talk about equipment pairing. How do you make these a bit more lush, a bit more weighty and a bit warm? Well, you introduce tubes or a hybrid. This unit has been reviewed on the Levante from Riviera, on the Poseidon DAC from Lampazeta, G-Point, you're a legend. Thank you so much, Greg, for lending those two units to the channel for review. G-Point, if you're in London, is a dealer in uh, Lampazeta and Riviera and a lot of other manufacturers, and he does home demos. So if you're in this category of performance of equipment, and if you're interested, all of his information will be down below. You can contact him and go, Oi, I fancy a Poseidon or a Horizon. Uh, can I have a listen? He will arrange a demo with you. Lovely guy. Thanks again, mate. It's very much appreciated. Touching on the sound with a touch of tubes, especially the lush warm category, mellows this headphone quite a bit. And you actually get the articulation of the tube. You get a good characteristic of the tube coming through. It makes it warm. It makes it lush. It makes it lovely. This neutral bright-ish headphone becomes a clean, clear window into a sunlit day looking into a meadow. Every aspect of sound is highly highlighted and very euphonic. Go into a solid state, such as the Tsail HM1 with this, that's when the punch dynamics and macro detail and speed come in, but utterly lifeless. Uh, unless you are looking for that type of music performance to get the energy and to get the love from the song itself rather than the headphone to do something for you, this is the sort of setup you'll put it on. Something similar to a reference sound in sale HM1. In fact, uh, HM1 with this is an exceptional tool for an engineer to mix tracks on. For something slightly warmer, thicker and bigger stage and genuinely halfway between a hybrid and a solid state is the Odoma the amplifier hidden behind me. This warm amplifier might have been my favorite pairing with the head two. It makes the bass a little warmer, brings a little life to the mid-range, smooths out that treble region, and it has been my daily driver with this setup that review will be coming shortly. The Odoma is an all-in-one system that I heard at Munich and I had to pull it in. It's a flagship category sitting where HM1 is and it's an incredible performer. This headphone is very quick, very dynamic, a very new take on a new set of drivers that I've never been played around with beyond the treble region. The tweaking of the tweeter in the reference monitors of studios or high-grade two-channel world. We have something new here. I can't wait to see the third iteration of this headphone because I think we can make it lighter, a tiny bit more ergonomic, but I want to see what development comes through from this, from the feedback of the community. Because this headphone, from A90 to Serene, from Cyan 2 to Hollow Audio May, will give you different results. It highlights equipments very well, and by the way, on the A90 and Cyan 2, if you're in this category, it was a fantastic performer. Cyan 2 is lush, colored, and beautifully texturally rich, and I think it's a perfect balance. And A90 drove it very, very nicely with Cyan 2. What about the caveats? Well, the caveats are part of the review, really. Um, if the design is not yours, and doesn't feel like something that you wanna listen to or use, it's not for you. If the ergonomics of changing the straps, which I think is highly dynamic and highly adjustable and highly variable for any shaped head, is not for you, you just want it to click, 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 it's not for you. But honestly, the upgrade from the head one to the head two is significant from its hardware design, from its resolution in its driver, and from its packaging and the additional accessories. So these head pads will last you say a year, year and a half. That's three years of life, maybe five. I've had pads that have lasted me 10 years before. So 
maybe longer, these headphones will last you a long time. So in conclusion, should you buy this? You should buy this if all the points I made meet your needs for the headphone too. If you're looking for audiophile grade lush to the track you're listening to, if you're looking for an audiophile headphone that is highly colored, adds a little something, some party trick to the track so that it feels as though you're analog EQ in the track itself rather than listening to what the studio built and developed and put out so that you don't miss any aspect of the track the engineer intended, you probably pick something like this. Or maybe you are actually in the music design world. Maybe you create music, maybe you master, maybe you mix. This will be for you too. In the comment section, give me your experiences of the head too as well. I'll see you down there momentarily. If you fancy reviews such as these, consider joining Patreon where you can jump into the private Telegram chat, get my impressions on equipment before they land, get reviews there before anywhere else, before it lands on YouTube, and you get to chat to our community, which is very vibrant and always very active. Until the next one, I'm Koji CEO, 